Guys, due to the mistake of rich people, this child's mother became a zombie. A biotech business is contracted to manage the golf course of an elite club located in a gated island enclave in Montreal. In order to allow wealthy people to play golf year-round, they sprinkle the area with their newest fertilizer, which melts snow and keeps the grass looking lovely and green throughout the winter. Dan, the security guard, carries a lot of supplies to his house the following day in town. He's a deranged survivalist who lives for the worst-case scenario and was brainwashed by a radio program that promotes every possible conspiracy. Dan tries without success to start a fire tonight, so he takes a shotgun shell and utilizes its powder, which results in a tiny explosion that burns one of his eyebrows. While Michelle, the CEO of the biotech business, plays golf with a wealthy couple to show them how well the grass is doing as a result of their treatment, Patricia, Dan's daughter, works as a caddy at the golf club, but the fertilizer particles are growing beneath the earth, tainting the town's water supply. An actor named Jacques drinks a glass of tap water at a studio before heading out to buy groceries. In order to keep perishables fresh, water is sprayed on the shelves and tap water is used to wash all of the fruit and tools in the store. Jacques feels a little lightheaded suddenly, but he ignores it for the time being. He notices his stomach growling and his teeth going green when he gets home. When he finally locates his wife in the restroom, he is fully transformed into a zombie and bites the unfortunate woman, consuming her flesh and causing her to change as well. Their eyes go green and they stop abruptly as Jacques joins her in the tub. Michelle and the couple head back to the main building at the club and are taken aback to find it deserted. Abruptly, a man bolts outside while shouting that they had to flee as people are sick, and shortly after, a number of zombie staff members emerge to pursue him. The woman summons the dog over at that same moment, but the dog charges at her and bites her neck in a fit of rage. After throwing the dog out right away, Michelle and the husband notice more zombies appearing. Both guys dash into the structure and lock the door to keep the zombies out as the woman freezes as her body changes. They put the dog in another room after it infiltrates and bites the husband in the leg. The husband changes and begins going after Michelle as the zombies congregate at the door and begin to beat on it. Michelle quickly hides in the kitchen after grabbing a knife. Dan receives a call in town from an elderly woman complaining that her neighbors are fighting and making excessive noise. When Dan gets there and rings the bell, the neighbors show up against the door and it becomes clear that they are zombies. Simultaneously, the elderly woman transforms into a zombie and pursues Dan. Dan promptly hides in his vehicle and attempts to contact for assistance, but no one responds. Dan tries contacting Patricia as more zombies emerge outside his window, but she is too busy trying to get away from the monsters to answer. Concerned, Dan makes the decision to search for his daughter using his car equipped with a weapon instead of the corporate vehicle. Adolescent Andre, who lives nearby, comes dangerously close to using tap water to prepare his sister Annie's milk until his mother reminds him to use bottled water to protect the infant. Andre sticks to Pepsi and never drinks any form of water. The mother soon begins to feel lightheaded, but Andre attributes it to all of her exercise. Shortly after, the mother transforms into a zombie and pursues Andre throughout the house in an attempt to harm him. Fearful, the child flees outdoors and stumbles, but just as his mother is going to go to him, Dan strikes her with his vehicle. Andre tries to aid her because she's still alive despite her injuries, but Dan stops him. He instructs Andre to hide in his house after explaining that 911 isn't working, and then he walks away. Andre grabs his mother by the legs and pulls her back inside the home as more zombies approach because he won't let her go. He rushes to shut all the doors before attempting to phone 911 and hearing that the island is under quarantine. It is discovered that city police have erected a gate at the bridge that links the island to the mainland, preventing anyone from entering or leaving. The mother tries to attack Annie at that point, so Andre takes her out and locks her in the bathroom. The mother gets in the tub after noticing that the shower head is leaking water. The zombies continue to assemble at the door as Annie continues to cry in the meantime. Until the zombies leave and the crying stops, Andre covers her with cushions, a blanket, and even a large plush toy. A few minutes later, as Andre's cat uses the pet door to enter the house again, a zombie appears out of nowhere and nearly grabs Andre. The zombie stops moving when the child exits the room, but it starts up again when Andre returns carrying a golf club, but rather than attacking, he chooses to hide. Patricia hides in the garage at the golf course until she eventually phones her father for assistance. Dan soon finds himself in the middle of a group of zombies outside, but he doesn't let that stop him from fighting them. He swiftly uses a knife to kill a couple and knocks down others before running inside. The military arrives in jets to bomb the island's key regions, cutting out the electricity. So the police pull away from the bridge gate at that moment. When Annie's nanny tries to cross the bridge to get to work the following morning, 
It has also been damaged. Andre, meantime, records the zombies through the glass, pausing only to see the Minister of Public Security's news conference. The man assures that everything is under control and adds that they had to demolish the bridge in order to isolate the issue. Andre's phone runs out of battery at that precise moment. When Andre goes to check on his mother later, he finds that she has some green goo on her body. When Annie crawls in, the mother tries to attack her. To get her to follow him instead, Andre makes noise and shakes her favorite veggies. When they finally get in the living room, the mother unintentionally knocks into the TV stand, which sends the television tumbling to her death. Upon returning the lifeless body to the restroom, devastated, Andre discovers that grass has sprung on her wounds. Then he takes her phone, which is regrettably broken. Subsequently, Andre climbs a ladder to reach the front door and peers outside, verifying that the zombies are only standing in the light. He opens the door, lets the zombies see the cat, and lets them race after it because he is sick of being cooped up. He grabs the golf club and places Annie in a baby carrier. Once the entrance has been cleared, the zombies pursue Andre as he sprints as quickly as he can toward the grocery shop. The doors are locked, and just as he is about to be encircled by the creatures, the door opens and Dan pulls him inside. Dan hasn't had a plan, but he's been here since yesterday and has set up a small camping area. They will die of hypothermia from swimming in the river since all of the boats have been taken away. Annie wanders around and finds a zombie behind locked doors as Andre searches for baby formula. Patricia is the one who's been contaminated as well. Dan is keeping her around in the hopes that she may eventually be cured by someone. While at the golf club, Michelle has reinforced all of the doors and is speaking with his colleagues via radio. They have informed him that experts are en route and that he needs to adhere to protocol as well. He kicks the zombie dog away because it keeps barking at him. He killed his companion in the kitchen. It is also discovered. Dan is still unable to light a fire back at the store, so Andre resorts to using a blowtorch. They listen to Dan's favorite radio program, which accuses eco-terrorists of being responsible for the zombie attack. While they eat, the Minister of Security is interviewed by the host, but the man is your standard politician, dodging questions or responding with evasive, meaningless statements. The host is suspicious, believing that the government will sacrifice its people in order to clean up the area. Dan makes the decision to phone the radio station and inform them that there are survivors and request assistance. But before adopting a side, the host notes that the rest of the globe doesn't want the illness and he wants to know the whole story. Annoyed, Dan ends the call. After talking over their choices, Dan and Andre decide to investigate the reason of this in order to develop a vaccine. After some consideration, Dan concludes that since it's the only thing that unites everyone, it must be in the water. As a result of his anxiety, he avoids drinking it straight from the faucet. He even believes that terrorists might have contaminated the water, which Andre finds absurd. Shortly after, Patricia, whose head has been placed in a cage to prevent biting, is taken by the three as they exit the store. They discover a group of green goopy zombies lounging in the sun, and a small girl strikes Dan the moment she spots him. He pulls her away fast, but he doesn't have the courage to kill her and carries on. Before the zombies catch up with them, the party escapes safely in Dan's car. In the meantime, two armed twins dispatched by the biotech business show up at the golf club and effortlessly dispatch every zombie who tries to stand in their way. All of the contracts and paperwork pertaining to his agreement with the club are being burned inside by Michelle, but he retains a tiny sample of the fertilizer. Soon after, the twins locate him, and Michelle steals one of their suitcases, which has spheres containing the medication that will eradicate the infection in 24 hours from them. The twins catch him when he snatches a sphere, make him consume the fertilizer sample, and then knock him out. The sphere hits the ground as they pull his body away. Returning to the survivors, they choose to leave Annie in the car upon reaching the water plant because they believe that her sobbing will draw zombies. Dan and Andre carry Patricia inside the building with them since they can't leave her there, even though there's a grassy zombie lurking in the water. Once Patricia realizes this, the males are forced to follow her as she starts to rush after him. She swiftly locates the pool and dives in, prompting Dan to follow suit in order to save her. The other zombie reappears out of nowhere and is about to attack, but Dan locates Patricia and holds her in front of him, causing the other zombie to retreat. As Andre gets closer and sees the zombies won't fight, the monster hears him and comes after him right away. Dan cuts Patricia's arm off in an attempt to get her out of the water, while Andre heads outside to join the pursuing zombies. When Andre finally makes it to the car, he hides inside, and shortly after, Dan emerges as well, using Patricia as a shield to keep the zombies at bay. As they get into the car with the siblings, Andre notices Patricia also has a phone due to a noise he hears. 
When he takes it and unlocks it with her amputated arm, he notices that grass is sprouting on the wound. Dan finds it strange that there is grass in the winter until he recalls the most recent invention made by golfers, not terrorists. The twins start smashing the spheres on the grass at the golf course in an attempt to remove all the evidence. The odd smoke on the grass is soon noticed by Dan's group, so Andre makes sure to document everything. Dan searches for an alternate entrance as they dash to the front door and discover it shut. He scales the roof to enter the building and let the others in. He then locks Patricia in the storage room and uses chairs to create a playpen for Annie. When Dan and Andre start looking around the structure, they discover the dog, which is coated in grass and still breathing. Andre runs to comfort Annie as she starts to cry, and Dan starts to feel lightheaded. But he finds out she's gotten out of the makeshift playpen. As Andre searches for his sister, Dan follows a dimly lit hallway and finds many bombs that are about to detonate the structure. Even though he starts to feel worse, he doesn't give up and keeps searching until he locates the chamber where the timer that connects to all of the bombs is located. Dan uses Patricia's arm to stop the timer just before his eyes turn green because he falls and is too weak to get up. The twins walk back inside to look into it after noticing nothing is erupting outside. Before they go, they find Annie in the kitchen and feed her the fertilizer. Andre keeps searching and eventually finds his sister, whom he takes away after seeing a zombie like Michelle in a closed chamber. The twins obstruct his path in another room covering Annie's mouth and grabbing Andre so they can give him fertilizer. But Annie turns into a zombie as well and bites off the twin's finger before the sample drops. Dan nearly attacks the other twin, but she defends herself. And when Andre moves her in his direction, Dan bites her. Andre retreats, stepping on the cure sphere, which allows the smoke to fill the room and begin operating within Dan and Danny. Dan then pursues Andre, and the two of them make it to the kitchen. Just as Dan is about to bite Andre, he notices Annie's presence and retreats. Before one of the twins can complete their transformation, the other pulls out a gun, and they shoot each other simultaneously. Then, Andre uses Patricia's phone to ring by removing Dan's outdated phone from his jacket. When he does, he begs for assistance and creates a video in which he explains everything. Andre brings Dan to the storage room so he can remain with his daughter while the video is shown on the news. The government will soon dispatch army helicopters to perform thorough cleaning. Andre walks outside to call for assistance while carrying Patricia's arm so that vaccinations can be administered while a group of troops use flamethrowers to burn down any zombies in their path. But before the second survivor could reach the soldiers, she was shot and killed. Andre makes the decision to hide while Annie recovers from the cure, and it becomes clear that the soldiers aren't there to save lives. Dan recuperates at the golf club as well, but as soon as the soldiers unlock the door, they set Patricia and Dan on fire. The Minister of Public Security declares that the illness has been completely eradicated and contained, but he is later seen sipping from a cup bearing the biotech company's emblem, suggesting that he was involved in the plot from the beginning. Andre continues to explore, discovering additional bodies of shot-down survivors. Abruptly, he spots something in the river, a volunteer boat headed by Annie's nanny, who comes to his aid without hesitation. Andre throws the arm into the ocean as they leave the island, realizing it is now useless, and a fish immediately turns into a zombie after it bites it. Guys, if you like our explanation, please like the video and subscribe our channel Movies Unlocked. Thanks for watching.